What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we'll be diving into controllers in Symfony. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. In the MVC pattern, controllers play a huge role since they are basically classes that organize the logic of one or more routes together in one place. You shouldn't see your controller as a place where you put all your application's logic. But it's better to think of controllers as a traffic cops that route HTTP requests around your application. In order to create your controller in Symfony, you need to define your configuration format first. In Symfony, there are four options and one is actually quite old. You've got YAML, XML, PHP and the old one which are the annotations. Any of these options is a good option, don't get me wrong. In my opinion, you should choose one where you're the most comfortable with. If I could give my honest opinion, YAML is a bit difficult to read and annotation simplifies the process, but that's because I'm used to it. Annotations also allows you to do the configuration directly inside the controller. So we need to pull it in through the CLI. And I don't want to use an external CLI right now because I don't want to keep switching screens. So what we can do is to open the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code. Inside the top menu, Let's click on Terminal and let's click on New Terminal. All right. Inside the terminal, let's run Composer, Require, Annotations. This command will pull in everything we need in order to use annotations. Now it has been done, so it's time to create our controller. Instead of creating the file ourselves, we can use the CLI in order to make our first controller. So what we can do inside the CLI is basically saying symphony, console, space. Then we got to say what we want to do. So we want to make something, colon, a controller, space, followed with the controller name. Let's say movies, controller. Now we're also adding the word controller right here, which is quite important to have. Now remember, the name that we're adding right here, so movies controller, will also be the name of our file but also the class name. So don't forget to use Pascal case right here. Developers on the internet have been arguing for many years if controllers should be singular or plural. And honestly, just choose something you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with using plural, but if you think it should be singular, go ahead and call it movie controller. The logic will work in the same exact way. Now, once we perform this command, you will see that we finally got our first error message. Now, if I make my terminal a little bit bigger, you'll see that the error is saying that the make command has not been defined. Now we can double check that. We can see which commands are available in Symfony by performing the Symfony console command. Right here, you'll see an entire list of commands and flags that we can perform. And I'm not going to cover all of them because there are quite a lot, but what I do want to test is the help command right here. So let's hit the arrow up to get our last console command and let's add a space help. As you could see, there is a list of options that we could add right here, but there's one help command that we can perform, which is the bin console help list right here. I'm not going too in depth on it. Otherwise we'll lose track of the actual video, which we already did because we were talking about controllers. With composer, we need to make sure that we pull in maker in order to make commands. So let's do that. Let's say composer require doctrine space maker. Now, as you could see, we just run into an error message. Now there is a package that needs to be installed in Symfony 8 that has not been updated with the PHP version that it needs to use. Now I found a workaround. Now what we can do is to open the composer.json and let's make it a little bit smaller. And right inside our require section, let's require a package. Let's name it laminas forward slash laminas dash code colon tilde 4.5.0 at dev. And don't forget to end it up with a semicolon. Now, what we can do is to save it. And inside the terminal, we can say composer install to update our composer.log. All right, that has been fixed. Now, what we can do right now is to say composer require maker. And what this will do is install the maker package. As you can see, it has been fixed. 
So let's create our controller one more time. Let's say Symphony console make column controller called movies controller. If we hit enter, you can see that a new file has been created inside the source folder where there is a folder called controllers with a file name of moviescontroller.php. And down below, you'll see a green box with a success message inside of it. Now let's open it. Let's open our source folder and let me make the terminal a little bit smaller controller folder and our movies controller. You'll see a file structure right here that you will see a lot in Symfony files. Now it always starts off with a PHP opening tag followed with a namespace app backslash controller. Now by default, it has pulled in three use statements right here. These are and should always be defined at the top of our page below the namespace because they allow you to use these classes however you want. Now below our use statements, we got the place where the real magic happens. We got a class right here called movies controller, which has and needs to be the same name as the file. It also extends the abstract controller that I just mentioned inside the use statement right here as the first use statement. And before we continue on, let me actually show you why use statements should be placed at the top of our page. If we copy our statement of the abstract controller and remove it and paste it at the bottom of our page, save it, you will see that the abstract controller is getting an error right now because the abstract controller does not exist inside the use statement. Now the reason why is because we're defining it right after we're using it, which cannot be done. So let me undo everything. Then we're going inside our class, well, this line of code, and this might be something that's new for you if you haven't used frameworks before, and in particular, a Symfony framework. What we're doing right here is called a route as an attribute that defines the route for a particular method. It's called a route method, saying that whenever the forward slash movies endpoint is being hit, the index method right here will be returned to the browser. Now let's test it out. Let's see if we're getting this JSON object back inside of the browser. Let's navigate to the browser. Let's change the endpoint to forward slash movies. Our JSON response, which was automatically added inside the controller class, has been printed out right here. If we navigate back to Visual Studio Code and change our endpoint to, let's say, forward slash movie, save it and navigate back to the browser, let's refresh it, you'll see that the endpoint does not exist, so it has not been found, because we obviously just said, well, change the route of the public function index method to forward slash movie. If we navigate back to Brave and change our endpoint to movie, you will see the same JSON object that has been printed out. If you're using an older PHP version or maybe even a better one in the future, your annotations or attributes might look different than mine. Now this is a pretty new method when you want to define your route. Let me show you the old way, just in case you're on the internet searching for issues that are not related to annotations on routes. So, what we can do is to go right below our public function index and create a new method called public function, let's say old method. We're going to add a colon right after the parentheses and we're going to say that this method needs to return a response. Right now we can add our curly brace, all right. And this is actually a new method since PHP 7.1 and it's called a return type declaration. Our response will throw an error right now because we haven't defined a response. Now we have added an extension in Visual Studio Code that will create doc blocks for us. So let's do that. Let's select our method, press Shift Command I, and this will create a new block above our code as you can see right here, which in your eyes might look like a comment but it's actually the annotations method. At the moment, it's returning a response. But what we can do is defining our route right here. So let's remove the return response. And let's say at route, parentheses. Now the route method accepts two parameters. The first one is actually the endpoint and the second one is the name. So let's say double quotes. Inside the double quotes, let's say old. So let's go right outside of it and add a comma, space, name. Let's set it equal to a value of a string and let's name it old. Now what we can do next is to copy this return 
this JSON object that we have inside our index method and paste it right inside the movies controller. Instead of saying, well, the message is welcome to our new controller, let's rename it to old method. Now let's save it. Let's navigate back to the browser. Let's change our endpoint to forward slash old. And as you can see, our response has been printed out with the response of old method. The old annotation method still works fine, but in my opinion, we should just stick with a new method rather than the old one. So let's get rid of the piece of code that we created. So right here, let's remove this entire piece of code. All right. Now, what is the logic behind all of this? Well, that can be found inside the Kavik folder where you have a routes folder followed with an annotations.yaml file. This file isn't actually an annotations file, but the right word is actually a bundle. What this file will do is creating a route from the controller folder right here based on our annotation. That being said, this was it for this video where we created a new controller and went over the basics of it. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.